What's going on, Clitz? What up, what up, what up? It's your boy, Dub. It's your boy, Ross. And we in the clutch, baby. Hey! Back to you, ladies and gentlemen, with another video today, you feel me? All right, we got a video by Drew Blinsky. Uh, this Ross is picked this one. <laughs> I did pick this one, because this is the guy that be always going to these places and finding themselves in What's these... his name? Drew Blin Blinsky. Did I said Just Blinsky. try to sound it out. <laughs> Blinsky. I said Blinsky. I said Blins. Blins. Blinsky. Or I don't know. I don't know. You may pronounce, pronounce it Blinsky. I don't. How you spell know. it? It's right there. B L I. Well, I can't see it like you because you. Oh, oh, it's smart. S K Y. So I don't. I don't know. I think it's Blinsky. I don't know. I don't know. It could be. Anywho, this is the guy that always goes around traveling the world and it's, it's pretty dope but he kind of finds himself in uh dangerous situations well apparently a few years ago he went to north korea of all places now we know he's obviously alive and well because we've seen some of his recent videos but the question is how did this happen and what went what, down? yeah what went down because you know we've seen a, i think a few videos uh of people you know they're very strict over there in north korea they don't play that shit mm -hmm. so um it's gonna be very interesting to see what he did to not get arrested and get put into a goddamn camp for the rest of his life so we're gonna find out maybe kim watches youtube you know what maybe he does oh, someone said maybe he knows dennis Rodman. That could be a thing too. So uh, we're gonna see what type of plugs he got because he got to have some type of inf inside information. Let's get. It. About three and a half years ago, I spent three nights and four days in Pyongyang, North Korea. At the time, it was my hundred and fourth country, and I had just started making Damn. travel videos. Legs. In fact, I think it was my fourth or fifth video overall that I made on my channels. And much to my surprise, that video had over 10 million views, and it was Damn. really uh, a game changer in terms of my content creation and getting to where I am today. Back then, I was truly an amateur filmmaker, Dang. taking barely usable footage, and I feel like if I had the chance to go again now, then I'd be able to tell a much more convincing and cinematic story. But unfortunately, North Korea is completely closed for U.S. passport holders. In fact, I'm one of the last Americans to step foot in the country. Oh, wow. Two months after I left, uh, there was an unfortunate situation, which I'm sure you guys have heard about on the news, and that led to all Americans being banned until today. Thankfully, through social That's media, wild. I was able to connect with some of you generous people out there who have been to North Korea and who are kind enough to send some of your footage, which will help me retell my story and relive the yeah, moments what happened? experiences through North Korea, which I'll be sharing with you in today's video. For some background context, I lived and taught English in South Korea for two years. Oh, oh that's I graduated from university in 2013, and I lived in a small village about 40 miles south of Seoul. And during those two years, I really uh, immersed myself in Korean culture. I learned the Korean language. I got a black belt in Taekwondo. I made hey, many Korean you friends. Pick your ass and, hey, yo, this nigga is living life. Damn. That's the definite. He is living life, y'all. That, living his life like it's golden. He is living life, y'all, bro. When a nigga said that was my 104th country I had been to at that time, and this video is like two years ago. Oh, redhead Eminem is an inspiration. <laughs> is it safe to say that he learned Taekwondo? <laughs> Not Taekwondo. <laughs> Someone said, fun fact, Kim Jong is friends with Steven Seagal because of his movies. Another fun fact, Steven Seagal has a reggae song with a fake accent called Strut. For uh, His first lines are me want the punani so you get dropping some factoids that i didn't know you gotta fact check that that's why i <laughs> partied a lot in seoul and i just really soaked in the beautiful atmosphere of south korea it was my dope, gateway didn't notice about the story still one of my favorite countries in the world and i've always been curious about what life is like up north because believe it or not before 1953 there was only one country called korea there was one korean peninsula mm -hmm. speaking one language one connection one family chain and unfortunately through war that all changed making north korea yep. the most isolated country in the world but when i had the opportunity to visit i jumped on it because i saw it as a really unique trip and uh, it certainly was so 
First off, the way to get into North Korea for anyone, you have to go on an organized group trip. I went with a company called Koryo Tours. There are a couple other companies that you better go in a group. Korea. But before you go, you have to attend a mandatory briefing in China. Mine was in Beijing. Some of them are in Shanghai or other cities. And basically, they run through uh, all the do's and don'ts of what you can and cannot do in North Korea. 99% of it is the don'ts because it's very. <laughs> yeah, it is. Well, you better be don't taking notes. So don't do this. Don't do this. Don't do this. Don't do this. Don't so do one this. One class you got to pay attention in. Three hours later. Don't do this. Don't do this. What can I? What can I do? Breeze. Right. <laughs> That's all you can. Don't do that too loud, or it's going they're gonna catch wind of it. <laughs> Facts, bro. So you can't go in in there, you know, listen to some fucking NBA young boy. It's over, bro. <laughs> Yeah, oh, you, oh, you definitely can't go over there talking about uh, LeBron James. You gotta talk about Jordan. Or go over Robin. there, or go over there talking about I'm um, <laughs> I'm them. Mm-mm. Oh no, <laughs> and nigga, it's only male and female. The end. There's Man. no they. There's no them. There's no it. Don't identify as an animal. Don't identify as a device. You better identify as a male and or female, or you're gonna identify as someone's slave in a slave. Yeah. That's what your identification yeah. gonna be. Person they don't play that shit over there. Four seven two one. Yeah. Nah, they don't play that shit. Holy. Strict. Um, and if you break any of the rules, you will face severe consequences. Uh, quickly, the rules are you cannot speak of the past, current, or future leaders. Uh, it's a big no-no. Uh, you cannot take any pictures of construction because it looks like the country is not perfect. Wow. And you must not leave the tour group at any time. Unfortunately, that's just the rules. As much as we all want to just wander around, that is not really the case in North Korea. You mm-hmm. have to abide by the rules and mm-hmm. it's really, really strict. If you take any pictures of the leaders, uh, like statues or, or pictures, they have to be in the full frame of the camera. You can't cut off their face. Hey guys, before hey. you go, Damn, bro. <laughs> Nigga, oh yeah, let me go ahead and upload this bad boy. <laughs> they here and knock on the door. Hey. Why the nigga finger cropped out? That Get him out of here. Hey. That picture wasn't full of frame, sir. I'm going to need you to come with us real quick. Come on. I can fix it. It's too late. Mm-hmm. It's too late. You was warned. We told you. Make sure our leaders are seen fully. You cropped out a half of his finger. You're going to jail for the next 30 years. Say goodbye to your family. You're going to be a slave. <laughs> That's fucked up, bro. <laughs> Can I Yo. just undo it? Nah, man. Nope. It's too late. It's Should've too late. Picture the right way. Dive deeper into this North Korea story. I want to tell you about the sponsor of today's video, which is Skillshare. Awesome, man. Skillshare is an online learning community and skill things. that you want from your fingertips. I would never the best platform. But, being said, but, let's but. jump back in to today's story. It's so I arrived right in Shanghai, meet the other group members. There was, At I don't noon? know, maybe 40 or 50 people in my group. I was definitely the only American. Um, I was really nervous. This was yeah, before yeah. I had been to other intense countries. <laughs> so imagine like, if you was black. <laughs> Boy! I'm, I'm watching through him. <laughs> we're, we're in North Korea right now. <laughs> you black and in North Korea? They, hey, sir, you can't even come over here. What you doing? Sir, don't even look this way. The, even, what? <laughs> That's Get him funny. out of here. Send him away. Wait. <laughs> for some feelings, for some reason, I feel like he's resisting. <laughs> the first one. So I didn't really know what to expect. Um, and I remember the feeling of being extremely anxious as I was there in China. All right, we are getting ready to board our flight to Pyongyang. Where are we going, Jeremy? North Korea. North Korea. Korea. The tour company that you sign up with will get you the visa. So basically, you don't have to do any paperwork beforehand. They give you this little blue passport visa thing, and you carry that with you the whole trip in North Korea. So it's all set, and the tour price includes round-trip flights from Beijing to Pyongyang and back. So that's pretty much all for the preparation. And then the flight to get there, you're on like a 1960 Soviet airplane on Koryo Airlines. It's the Hell nah, oh, bro. Man. No, sir. You that's... might as well be flying spirit at that point. <laughs> yeah, because you're going to be these, in the spirit because ain't no way. These niggas ain't got updated planes, bro. What is this? Why am I flying in a plane that's, that was built in the nowhere. 60s? Bro. Mm-mm. Fucking check engine light been on for 30 years. Tax one to carry y'all. <laughs> <laughs> You know what? He ain't have to worry about it. He ain't have to worry about no plane. Just 
got an alien. Could back. you imagine if they would have dropped his ass off in North Korea? And he like just in Kim just, Jong Un's like yeah office, office. Is just like yo, what's good, bro? <laughs> well, well, his story would have ended. Yeah, his story. Yeah, yeah it was, it, his story would have been over. The that would have been a short Mister Balling video. Yeah, the aliens would be like, oh damn, we fucked up. I don't think we can get him out of that one. That's I mean, cold. we could. But we probably not going to. Let's find another chosen one. Yeah, like <laughs> chosen one. <laughs> Only North Korean airline, and they give you this really nasty burger to eat on the plane, and it's Ugh. really interesting. Uh, the flight, I felt like we were gonna crash out of the sky, but sure enough, we landed in North nah, Korea bro. and uh, got Straight, my passport bro. stamp. We made it. Serious. It was on for one of the most life-changing trips and eye-opening trips that I've ever taken. So quickly to recap um, the four days that I had there, you're on a bus, right? And so you're touring around with people, you have a local tour guide and an, another tour guide within the company, and you do the same kind of loop around Pyongyang. And yes, it does feel very staged. They're only taking you to areas that they want you to see. Uh -huh. That's completely mm -hmm. understood. But it's also the same case in Turkmenistan and uh, Eritrea and some other countries around the world. So that's just the way that it is in North Korea. We visited all the main squares, the plazas. Uh, we went to some restaurants. Um, it's not really that exciting. It's always dark and gloomy and, and there's a lot of people out walking around, but always curious like where they're going because there's no street signs. Like you don't see like hospital or or market, like maybe people just know where they are, um, but it's really strange. You just have like all these big buildings. Most of them are empty. Uh, one of the tallest hotels in the world is this pyramid thing. And it's completely empty inside. So you do get this really weird feeling that- So it's just all for it's show. Just, yeah, that's all so it is. To make it seem like, oh shit, good over here when really niggas out here struggling. That's yeah. it. Starving. That's why they don't want you to go to certain places. They only want you to take pictures of buildings that are already up. Because if they want you, they want it to look like, oh shit, it's bustling over here. No, it's not. <laughs> These niggas, the buildings is empty. They might as well just be cardboard. Basically. It's all fake. <laughs> yeah, no, nah, it's that's that's it's, wild. It's like a creepy bro. movie. Yeah. The only people that's living good is Kim Jong-un himself and his family. That's the only niggas really living good. Everybody, you can tell he well, let me stop, bro. Let me stop. I'm gonna stop. All right, bro. <laughs> I was about to go. How Let many me... times do we have to tell you, old man? <laughs> this time it's gonna, be, it's gonna be more than a my lights go out. It's gonna be a tactical nuke incoming. Hey, whoa, bro! How far are you from me? Oh. You good, bro? I'm, I'm, unless it's one of them big nukes, then I don't know, bro. <laughs> you just need to chill, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think my car gonna be fast enough to outrun that shit. Right. It's yes. following me, dog. Oh, word. Oh, oh. click. <laughs> that's cold. I mean, that's cold, bro. What the hell I'm going to do? Hey, I don't know, man. <laughs> Help me, bro. You got yourself into this. Everything is staged, but you really don't know because there's no facts about it. Uh, this is all just Who's speculation. Out, we went to several museums, which were extremely biased. And right, American, hit that wrong number. It was still really interesting to go and, and uh, learn about it. My favorite part about uh, my trip to North Korea Dove, is I, I feel so good. went during the annual Pyongyang Marathon. So it's a normal marathon that goes through the streets of Pyongyang and you have international racers. Uh, I remember the winner was from Kenya, but there were people representing over 50 countries that come to Pyongyang this weekend to run in the marathon. I'm not a runner, so I signed up for a 10K, but I saw it as a unique opportunity to be away from the tour guides only for this four hour period mm. and kind of walk uh, in the streets and talk to the people on the sidelines. And that's exactly what I did. And it was really cool because I can speak Korean, as I told you, it's the same language in the wow. north. It's a little bit yes. different, but the, the roots are the same. And so I was high-fiving kids on the street, talking to them, how are you? I told them I'm from the States and, and how do you feel about meeting an American? And that was really the coolest experience wow. for me was to be on my own in the streets of Pyongyang talking to North Koreans. And then after the marathon, everybody so was celebrating and drinking beer from vendors on the streets. So it was a very festive atmosphere and something that um, I surely didn't expect in North Korea. Oh. But that was very, very memorable for me uh, was running in the marathon. The My the other loophole. favorite experience <laughs> yeah. in all of Pyongyang was taking the metro. So actually in Pyongyang, it's the deepest underground public transportation system in the world. Oh wow! It literally takes like three full minutes on an escalator to go from street level all the way down and Damn. Like these bunkers. 
three minutes is a, that's a full song. You listening to a full song on one escalator, escalator, you escalator, heard. escalator. <laughs> Ew. <laughs> right, bro. It's like, but you hear what he said? It's like a bunker style. So, hmm. Because I mean, that's you know, if some shit start popping off, everybody, everybody just hop on the escalator. To- yeah, and they just stay down there for a while because that's bro, that's a long way down three bro. minutes. That's a long time to be on an escalator, bro. That is a very <laughs> long time, bro. And if you look at the, the clip, you can see look how far look at that. Yeah, bro. It's not like, it look, like look, at, look at this, it's just endless. It's like bro, a wall of it heaven. literally takes like three full minutes on an escalator <laughs> to go from street level all the way down until you reach like these bunkers which are, uh, I believe, Soviet-built mm-hmm. 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 they go system. Off. And we took six or seven stops, um, and it was the coolest experience just to be completely immersed in North Korean culture with people oh, cool. um, living their daily lives. And yes, we got a lot of stares and everything, but yeah. that was really a memorable experience for me. And our hotel, once you get right. to the hotel at night, uh, around 7 p.m., they lock the doors and you are not able to leave at all for any reason. But thankfully, the hotel has really nice views, a revolving... Damn, you so, can't go nowhere. They, them niggas lock you in. Good night. <laughs> like, nah, fam. I ain't know it's supposed to work like that. I thought the lock was on the inside. Nah, don't don't come out. Cause I'm gonna feel like you can get in if you want to. That's cool, no. Nah. Don't bring your ass out. <laughs> That's exactly how they, they looking at him like, help me. <laughs> don't bring your ass out if you if you want to. Go ahead. We warned you. <laughs> Just broke the rule. Broke the rule. Restaurant on the top, pool table, bowling okay. alley, TVs, no internet. Yeah. It was really like didn't need to go anywhere else when you got to the hotel. So no that kind of sums up my experiences on the ground in North Korea. I al- always reflect on my trip there and thinking about I was so young and naive at the time, but it, it was just surreal to to think about actually walking on the streets of the world's most isolated country. A few other times I was able to interact with uh, North Koreans, specifically in my hotel and in some of the other restaurants around town. uh, You were able to talk to them one-on-one. Some of them even speak English because they learned in the the universities there. But overall, Mm. you're mostly with the group and having this really um, surreal experience together. And if the question ever comes to me, Drew, what is the most interesting country in the world? It is without question North Korea. It's extremely interesting, very isolated. <laughs> and, nothing, you um, don't know nothing about honestly, it. Yeah. It's very depressing. Nobody's really happy walking around. They look down at the ground. They don't smile that much at you. There's not that many things to do. You do see parks, kids playing sports, doing archery, playing soccer, badminton, running. And so there's some kind of fitness and sports. And every year, North Korea is in the Winter Olympics. It is very much controlled society. And I just feel bad for the mm-hmm. people there. And since I've left North Korea, Damn. I've met uh, a handful of North Korean refugees. Um, and I've done three or four videos on my channel, if you guys have seen them before. And I really feel for them. They all have told me similar stories stories about how they've had to escape and how brutal the regime was and how Mm -hmm. their family uh, is in danger because they've left and how they have no intention to go back. And I really do feel bad. That's kind of cold though. You know, we all can't choose where we're born. You know, I'm very lucky and thankful that I I was born in the United States of America. And I feel bad for people who are just born in North Korea and they don't have a choice and they have to literally figure out a way to leave the country. So it's very sad. Obviously, there are some severe human rights issues in North Korea that we yeah, get yeah. into right now because um, yeah. it gets very political, but I definitely do not support them. I Once again, I just feel bad for the millions, the tens of millions of people who are grown up in the North Korean society and who are brainwashed to think a certain way. Mm-hmm. And it's crazy that just south of that border called the 30th parallel, you have one of the most it's futuristic and modern and capitalistic yeah. societies on the planet. It's such a contrast and it's actually unbelievable that that still exists in present day. So these are some of my thoughts about North Korea. I've been wanting to that get sucks. them off my chest for a while yeah. because the video that I made, the one that went viral, I just wasn't able to put it together quite well. And, and honestly, when I watch it now, I cringe <laughs> because of how it was shot. Um, and how poorly the the camera was and how the scenes came out and so now that I have better equipment and I have a little more cinematic footage I wanted to just um, 
tell this story and leave an open conversation for you guys to let me know what your thoughts are on North Korea in general. Have you ever been there before? Have you ever thought about going there? What are your thoughts about the regime? Hell no. What needs to change? I ain't got no thoughts. For North Korea to hopefully make peace with South Korea. I ain't going. Which would be an incredible thing if we can see that in our lifetime. Unless and Dennis Robin there, guys, I ain't going. Thank you so much for tuning in, in either. to this video. I'm Drew Binsky, and if you like my travel- oh, you ain't going, to... Oh, you too good for our country? <laughs> No, I'm not stupid. <laughs> My nigga senses be tingling. Bro, you can you can pass for it. You'd be good, bro. You say what? You, you can, can pass. pass for it. Yeah, you can pass, pass for it. Like I me, nah. But you I can pass for what though? Getting through. Nah. You know you actually had a conversation with Dennis Rama, which is actually cool. That's yeah. actually cool. So he made hey, I remember you. Boom, 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 boom. You should come to North Korea with me. I'm not going, Dennis. Go take me to Jordan. <laughs> take going. me to Jordan House or something. <laughs> <laughs> but what it is. Yes, Dennis. But, but what if then he is like, hey, yeah, 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 yeah. He, he, you know, he recognized you from YouTube because I'm sure he got internet access. Yeah, of yeah, 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 yeah. I know nah, that guy. Bro. I like um, that guy. He's funny. Hey, Dennis, let's go to Jordan House. I told you. Enough with this. Enough <laughs> with this Kim Jong Un shit. <laughs> I'm good. Whoa. I'm straight. Let's go to Jordan crib. Let's go hoop. <laughs> so I can post a video about me hooping against Jordan. <laughs> and some Jordans. But yeah, no. Nah. Now, now this, wow. this was a very interesting video. This dude literally. Hey, what you talking about? Dennis Rodman. What do you mean? He got the nose piercings and all that and the tattoos. Okay. You'll make it. <laughs> little Rodman. Come here, little Rodman. With the <laughs> little beard. Rodman. Little Rodman. Little Rodman with the beard. What's good, man? It's popping, bro. Nigga Ross gonna dye his hair. <laughs> <laughs> Fuchsia. What's good, man? What's, what's going down, man? But I yeah, no. Nah. Yeah, that's that's very. I I definitely do feel bad uh, for the people that you know have to grow up. You know, because again, you you're not in control of that. You know, what I'm saying yeah. you're not in control of you know where you're born and you know the the outcome of that. Like we just have no control over that. So yeah, for them to be born out there and not really have no control, say on what they can can do, what they want to yeah. do. If you escape, now you have to have in your mental that your family is now gonna suffer because of some, mm -hmm. like bro, if my cousins or my dad or whoever else steals them, why do I have to suffer for them? It's not a bloodline thing. Not everybody's bloodline <laughs> don't follow the same suit. It's all like, about family, bro. But that's you know that's his way of controlling the people. Putting that yeah, it is. It's it's kind of very extreme. Very extreme. You know when you're out here trying to put babies in fucking prison. That, that, He's in that, prison. Yep. That that should let you know how extreme it is. And. Yeah. You can't do nothing. Them niggas said, hey, bro, yeah, that's cool. Y'all in this hotel, 7 p.m., we closing shit down. Don't, don't fucking leave here. That's wild. That's mad controlling, fam. But hey, yeah. anywho, check out the other video we did with all of the rules and stuff like that and the people escaping on North Korea. We definitely posted some more on the main channel. So uh, let us know yeah. in the comments down below what other videos did you guys want us to check out. Love how this dude puts his videos together. And of course, his look back on. We all look back at beginner footage and be like, ugh. Mm -hmm. What is going on? Our most viral right. video, I feel so. I hate the video, but mm -hmm. it worked like that sometimes. But yeah, we catch you guys later. Continue to spread love, be love. Peace out. Already, man. If you got a problem, then we got the solutions. And there's no illusion. I made this shit happen. I'm living life lucid. I'm switching my strategies. Now they hate on me because I'm causing casualties. But why are they after me? Deep inside they know they can't handle half of me